Hi, it's Daniela from California Carnivores, and we're going to talk about the basics of carnivorous plant care. And in this video, we're going to talk about water. Water is a really important topic to understand when you want to grow really amazing carnivorous plants and have them thrive for a really long time. So we're going to cover that topic in this video, and I will follow up with some videos about how to water specific kinds of plants, because I know you have questions about how to water cephalotis and nepenthes and saracenia. So we'll do that in a separate follow-up video. This one is going to just be about water quality, what kinds of water to use, and frequently asked questions. So if I miss anything in this video, go ahead and drop some comments down here. Um, but just be know, know that I'm going to have like another video or two coming about how to water. So carnivorous plants do require very pure water. And that's really important. It's actually one of the most important things you can do for your plants because carnivorous plants all over the world evolved to be carnivorous because they could not get what they needed from the soil they were growing in. Their soil was not nutritious. And to now, at this point, they cannot grow in nutritious soil. It will kill them, which is why we tell you never ever to pot them up into a rich, composty, yummy soil. They won't do well. They'll die. And water is the same thing. They do not want water with a lot of minerals and salts in it. And if you give them water with minerals and salts, over time, those minerals and salts will build up in the soil and your plant will start to look really bad. They kind of do this weird shrinking thing. They just start to look gross and they die. They will die if you do that for too long. If you use minerals and salt, if you use water with high minerals and salts, you're gonna have to repot your plant a whole lot more frequently because the buildup in the soil is really detrimental. So it's worth it to go ahead and get the correct kind of water that has low levels of minerals and salts because your plant will look, will, will look so much better. It's shocking how much better it will look. It will save you the trouble of repotting quite as frequently and it will make your plant live much longer lifetime. So definitely do it. So what is the kind of water to use, right? I get this question all the time. The best, the absolute best you could do would be rainwater, distilled water, or reverse osmosis water. You can use purified water from the grocery store, but I want to put a caveat there because I do notice sometimes that those jugs of purified water say like, now with minerals added, and we don't, we don't want that. So definitely look at the labels of purified water because they often add that because people use it for babies and so they want to add some good stuff for babies. When it comes to regular drinking bottled water that people would drink, I would avoid it entirely because most of the time they add salts to it because it's good for people. So I would not use that. The most cost-effective methods for finding this kind of water kind of vary on your collection size. So if you have just a small collection of plants, I would just get the grocery store water. They have pretty cheap jugs of it, and then, you know, it's like 99 cents a jug. And then most grocery stores also have somewhere hidden in a weird spot of the store a refillable station for water. And that water is purified and oftentimes really great quality water. Just check the labels over there. Use that, it's cheaper and it's better for the environment because you're reusing your own containers. So I would do that. Now, if you have a big collection or you're just really dedicated to this, I would invest in a reverse osmosis system. If you're just a little bit handy, you can easily set this up under your sink and then you can actually um, drill a hole along your kitchen sink next to your other, um, like your faucet and all that other stuff and have a little spigot coming out and then you just get to refill your, your containers right there at your sink. Because reverse osmosis is a system of filtration that is really, really great. If you have fish tanks, you also probably know about this because it's a really great uh, way to get water for your fish. So I would definitely invest in that, a good reverse RO system. Honestly, you can spend less than like $150 and you will have your own water just right there all the time. Um, another great option is a rain barrel. So I collect rain in my backyard in a rain barrel. I got an 80 gallon rain barrel for about $200. Um, it fills up every storm and then I just use it. By the next storm, I'm ready for, for it to go again. It's very convenient, it's kind of fun too. So I would recommend that. It's also a nice way to save a little money on the water bill. So those are my recommendations for where to get your water. Uh, there is another option, and that is that sometimes your tap water is shockingly pure. We have parts of the Bay Area where we are because we're located in Sonoma County, California, and we're we tested a lot of water in our area. Some parts of the Bay Area actually have really good water that comes out of their tap, and you might have that too. So I would recommend investing in a TDS meter. And what's a TDS meter? It's this, it's really simple. It's a total dissolved solids meter. You can get them at hardware stores or online for like $15. Don't spend more than that. It's really easy. You just take this off, and then you just put this part in the water Follow the instructions, it's gonna test out, give you a reading right here, and you'll know how many parts per million your water has of total dissolved solids. 
Anything under 130 parts per million you can use on most plants safely and effectively. That is going to build up a little bit in your soil. It's not totally pure, but it's still honestly pretty great. So go ahead and use it. There's only two kind of groups that I would worry about and suggest you still use more purified water on, and that is Venus flytraps and Pinguicula. Those two are exceptionally sensitive. If you use a lot of water with uh, any kind of minerals and salts in there, they're going to they're gonna show you. They don't like it, and it's really frustrating. So it's worth your time to just go ahead and get pure water for those two guys there. So some of my frequently asked questions I get are, um, well, the one of the ones I get a lot is a panicky, oh my God, I'm out of distilled water. I'm actually getting this one a lot right now with people in quarantine or um, in this uh, new shelter in place situation. So go ahead, you can use your tap water as needed if it's an emergency, unless you live somewhere where you it's like not safe for people to drink the tap water, it's gonna be okay. Your plants will survive if you have to water them with tap water for a week or two, they just will try to get purified water, or I'm sorry, distilled water again when you can, but it's okay if there's an emergency. They're not gonna die like with one exposure, it's gonna be okay. Another big question I get asked is, can I make my own by boiling my water or leaving my water outside in a bucket? Now, in this case, it does not help what we're looking for because what we need is the for our water to have no minerals or salts. And those two methods, well, they might help with chlorine. They don't help with anything that really affects our plants. So those things don't bother with it. It does not help your time, help you at all waste your time. So just go ahead and invest in a system that actually will purify your water with filtration. So like reverse osmosis um, or going to the store, just buying it pre-filtered from distilled. So those are the really the best options. I think I've covered actually some most of the questions already that I can think of. And like I said, if I've missed something about water quality and uh, procurement, go ahead and post down here and I'll get to you. I'll post some more videos later uh, this week or next week about how to water different things. And I hope you guys have a really, really good day. Bye.